well, why do we need a Royal College? RCGDMs, that's the thing to watch in the future. Well, traditionalists would say that a hallmark of any profession is that it should have a professional association, which we have with the BDA since 1880, a regulator, which we've had in the form of the GDC since 1956. And the thing that we've been missing is a Royal College of our own. And it is seen as a sort of three legs of a stool in many other professions. And it's the one we have not had in dentistry and you know, has been seen by many people and pay homage back to the people who um, in 1990, 1991, uh, just prior to the faculty being formed, uh, set off to produce a college of general dental practitioners. And for various historic reasons, you know, amalgamated in and joined forces uh, to with the people that created the FGDP with, hosted by the College of Surgeons. But they, so this is not new, this has been recognised for about 100 years or so that the thing that we've been missing in dentistry as a profession is our own Royal College. So that's a traditional you, but you know, let's get up to date and what's it really about well, yes, there's an issue of equivalence. For far too long, dentistry has been the only mainline healthcare profession without its own college, let alone its own Royal College. And that to me, and has been for me for many years, something that is wrong and not right for dentistry. There is no question that professions that have their own Royal College have a different standing and status from those that don't. It's as simple as that. And that leads on to this issue of inclusion. There is you know, quite clear that when people like the Secretary of State, during things like COVID crises and things before, you know, turns to his uh, private secretary and says, get me all the presidents that are all colleges in here. I wanna speak to them. Dentistry has not been there because we don't have our own college, let alone our own Royal College. There are lots of events and circumstances, consultations, you know, all sorts of things that dentistry has not been there in their own right. And as we all know that we have been hosted as FGDP has been by colleges of surgeons not just in Edinburgh, but in Edinburgh and Glasgow as well. And can you imagine if a president of our old College of Surgeons gets invited to some event with a Secretary of State or a First Minister, or let alone the Prime Minister, and they're only gonna have five minutes or 10 minutes of time, how much of that time are they gonna talk about dentistry? Not a lot, because they are there as surgeons. So I maintain, equivalence, we deserve and we justify the standing and status of all other key healthcare professions. And we must be there in all future consultations and considerations about future healthcare agendas, et cetera, and or the new crises, we ought to be there given the importance of oral health to general health and well-being. And as I'm sure most of us appreciate, you know, we are part of holistic care of people. Oral health is too important. Why else do we need our own Royal College? Well, it is an endorsement. Getting to be a Royal College is not something simple. There are lots of criteria. There are lots of hoops to jump through and people like Simon working away. It's not just ticking boxes about governance and charitable status and we'll get trustees and we're doing things in all sorts of ways. It is that it is something important, that it's something that society needs that justifies a royal charter. It's important to society. And that endorsement is really important. If we get that endorsement that we're perceived to be important to society, uh, not just healthcare, et cetera, that we are part of this society and its social care, et cetera, and that, of course, is part of recognition. Yes, patients know when they go to see a surgeon that they see Mr. Miss so-and-so with FRCS, 
you know, from the Royal College of Surgeons or whatever, they know that person has jumped through lots of hoops to be where they are. And there's issues of trust and confidence in that person. We want our own Royal College that people with a fellowship of the Royal College of General Dentistry or membership of the Royal College of General Dentistry, there's a recognition that people have jumped through the hoops, that they are trustworthy and they can be there to deliver and patients can have confidence in them. And yes, there is the issue of appeal to our, our colleagues across the profession. And of course the college is for the whole dental team, everybody, 120,000 of us. If we all joined up, indeed, if only half of us joined up, we have the opportunity to be the biggest Royal College amongst the Academy of Royal Colleges. The Royal College of General Practitioners, for example, is the biggest at the present time with a mere 44,000. If amongst our profession with 120 potential thousand members, half or more join up, we will be the biggest Royal College in the Academy of Royal Colleges if we get in there. That will give us influence and power that we have never had in dentistry. And we deserve to be there, ladies and gentlemen. We are important to oral health, to well-being, not just in old age, but in every age. And having that, I hope, is an appeal for people to join this initiative, to be part of this, this huge historic opportunity for dentistry to move forward from where it is to being its own independent, fully constituted by traditionalist way profession of dentistry. And yes, with it comes independence. I know our roots are in surgery, the barber surgeons and all that stuff we know about, but we all know we're already as much in dentistry, oral physicians as dental surgeons. And the future of dentistry is not just a surgical base. It is something very different. And no disrespect to our colleagues in the surgical colleges, the Royal Surgical Colleges, who have hosted us and supported us through the years to where we've got to. Yes, they recognize us as fellow or healthcare professionals. Do they consider us as fellow surgeons? No, I don't, to put it bluntly. We are there, but it is time we moved on. And other colleagues have done similarly in the last 20, 30 years. Ophthalmic surgeons, anaesthetists, we are not the first to move away from the surgical base of Royal Colleges of Surgeons and become independent and have our own furrow to, to till and to have our own image, vision and mission for our profession. We are ready for it, more than ready for it. And we need our independence for a college that will stand up for dentistry in its own right not to become separate or independent. We want to be fully integrated into healthcare. We want interprofessional working, but we must control our own destiny. And now is the time. And that's the new dawn. And it is a new dawn, partly because of the pandemic. We all know dentistry is not ever going to be the same it was the way before the pandemic. It was changing anyway. Everybody is crying out for new arrangements to be pre preventatively orientated, not all drill and fill dentistry of reactive to hole in the tooth, fill it or take it out stuff. We want to move on to being preventative or minimal interventive care, longitudinal care for our patients, teeth for life. That's what we want. And the college is very timely to be coming in to setting career pathways of having new standards and standing up you know, for dentistry, moving in a way that can best serve society in what is a new dawn post pandemic, but was there anyway, we all accept. Patients beginning to look for something 
other than the way dentistry was. And very importantly, we've had the dental team for 20 years, 25 years or something, but we really need to cement it. And cementing the dental team and making it truly work as a team where all there's parity across the team, we're all team members. That's the strength of the dental team of moving forward of what dentistry can do for society of realizing um, its potential of the individuals within the profession, realizing their potential through career pathways, et cetera. This is the opportunity of having our own Royal College for the whole dental team of bringing it all together, of making it work together for the benefit of society, for the benefit of patients, and yes, for the benefit of the people within the profession that we can have the career pathways and people can realize their potential within the profession. And that's, again, another reason why we need our own Royal College. So how, when, and what's the team effort required? Well, there is a process to be gone through. Yes, we're moving, we're just now 40 odd days away from full activation of the college. And I hope you'll hear later on from uh, the other people on the panel tonight, uh, culminating in Simon telling you how to join. You know, if we are going to do this, if we are going to get royal status, if we are going to move on and realize the things I've been talking about tonight, then we need people behind it. People can't stand back and be bystanders. This is a time to stand up and be counted amongst the profession to be part of this initiative. That will impress the people we've got to impress the Privy Council. They are very cautious. They don't want Her Majesty to put pen to paper and sign off a Royal Charter for something that is not serious, that is going to have longevity, viability and importance and significance. That's the how. We have got to get behind this. This is a golden opportunity, an historic opportunity, time for dentistry to move away from old traditional style to something that's new, fit for purpose, and is going to be something that we all want to be part of. When? Well, the sooner all everybody joins up, the sooner people get behind the initiative, the sooner people contribute to it, um, then the quicker it's going to happen. It's as simple as that, because when we go to the Privy Council to ask for a Royal Charter, they are going to ask obvious questions. Well, how many people in the profession are supporting this? How many people are behind it? How many organizations in dentistry are behind this? You know, what is the impact going to be? And the impact is greater the more of us are committed to it, that join and contribute to it. And that's the team effort, ladies and gentlemen. This college is going to be unique possibly a world first. It is not just in dentistry, but in healthcare. No other profession has embraced the team approach in the way that dentistry has. If we talk to some of the existing Royal Colleges, they are now envious that we have this opportunity, not just to be a Royal College of general practitioners from the medical side, they wanted and now would like to embrace all the other people who are providing primary medical care. We can do that. We are the college of the future. We are going to be the model, if we get this right, and we're all behind it, of a whole profession team approach to holistic care of our patients. That is our challenge to be in there as a team effort. And the college is moving forward so that there's parity across all of the different categories of oral healthcare professionals that they will have parity within this Royal College. And that's a huge strength, an enormous strength, and one that could make us the model Royal College of the future. Dentistry has this opportunity right now, and we must grasp it and we must move on. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen, that's my contribution. To me, it is a fairly clear message. We have a huge historic opportunity 
to move dentistry on, to move together as a whole dental team, to be something that is unique, possibly a world first, to work together as a dental team and to achieve huge things, new leadership, new career pathways, new standards, and all the other things that the college will bring to us. So please think about joining the college, which I know Simon is going to come on and talk about. And yes, there is no omelets without cracking eggs. And if anybody would like to contribute to taking this forward, please get a hold of me, please contact me. I'm delighted to correspond with you. And this is a mission that is, I think, you know, if I look back over my career of all the things I've done, you know, was there a purpose in all this is to be here to put this message across to say of having been chair president of the regulator, having been president of the professional association, having done all sorts of other leadership roles in dentistry. This is a missing piece in the jigsaw. Not for me, it's for Abby and people to take it on. I've done my role to a certain extent to get to the start line and to help to support it thereafter. But the profession must seize this opportunity and take it forward. But I hope that's been helpful to set the scene about why this is really important and why people must contribute and engage to this. Please, please, please. This is the future of the profession, not just for yourselves, but future generations of people, possibly your kids, your grandchildren. You know, there's a great history of dynasties of dentistry, et cetera, you know, from families. You know, this is the future and we can be special in all sorts of ways. In fact, we can be leaders and show other professions how it really ought to be done. And we have that within our grasp. So seize it and do it. Thank you very much.